trail because it's I've run many of these trails around the world and if I'm honest this is probably the best marked, the best looked after. The huts are amazing. You guys do a wonderful job. You should give yourselves a round of applause for, for doing such a great, great job. <laughs> and the, the, and the, the, the support has been fantastic from Robert and the other people that came out to meet, meet me on the trail. Not just from the high school, the friends of the high school, but also from people from all around Adelaide. Runners and non runners alike have been out, and uh, if it's just for a quick, ha ha a quick handshake or a quick donation to our, our charity, uh, it's been overwhelming. It's, it's amazing. I, I just don't know where these people come from. Mm -hmm. Come out of, come out of the, uh, the woodwork. Look, it was, uh, as you guys know, you, you, you've been out there. It's, uh, it's an amazing trail, you know, right across its, its entire length. And um, I guess this thing that people, uh, I guess walkers often say to me, you must miss a lot because you, you're running. And no, I just see more in one day. You know, I just see so much. I see the la the landscape change within within the mor the morning, and that's kind of incredible, you know, to, to see it change so quickly. Uh, it is so diverse out there; it's it's it's, it's incredible. Uh, I think, if I'm honest, it was um, probably a little bit tougher than I originally thought. Um, I don't know why, when you hear the word range, you think that's potentially flat. I don't know why that came into my head, but uh, <laughs> you know, it, was, it, 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 it definitely has its uh, its challenging moments. Um, Robert did ask me if I, if I fell over. I did fall over. I've also learned to speak French while I was out there as well. A lot, lot of times, a lot like that. Uh, particularly on those on those dry creek beds and those river beds and through the mm. gorges and stuff. That's mm. that's yeah. tough going for a runner. You know, I've done those kind of things before, but uh, they're always a challenge. Always, always uh, frustrating. Look, I guess the biggest question people ask me is why. You know, why would somebody want to go and do that? You know, within two weeks to put themselves through. Two marathons a day, or 80, 85 kilometres a day, through that kind of environment, and it's a question I struggle to answer. You know, I, I still ask myself that same question every day, particularly when I'm out there. I'm going, why? Like, why would I want to do this to myself? And uh, I guess the last kind of six months before coming into this this particular project, I've sat down with uh, a bunch of uh, psychiatrists. <laughs> Most people think that's quite fitting, but then you bloody should. <laughs> Um, to try and figure out why I do what I do, you know, why I go and take these huge challenges on against these trails around the globe. And, uh, and quickly what I've learned is, is that it's not really about the why, because the why is so different for everybody. And I guess you guys in, in this room are all trying to head towards a, co a common goal, but your reasons for doing that are all so, 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 so different. The reasons why you're here tonight are so different. And your why changes weekly, daily, monthly. Mine changes by, by the minutes of times when I'm out there on the, on the trail. Um, so yeah, it, it, the why, the why is, is, is hard. But I think, more, uh, I think the better answer to that, that question is, is how? How does the everyday guy, and believe it or not, I am an everyday guy. I say to people, I'm not Superman, I'm just this every, every, everyday guy. How does he go out there and achieve something kind of monstrous in a, in, in a sense? And um, and that's what I've tried to show in those mini documentaries. Have any, any of you guys seen those little little snippets of video we kind of yeah. put out? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you're not seeing those, I, re I recommend you do. Um, you put two of those out, first five days, then the 10 day mark, and, and the last one's just been released now, which is we've got online. So um, kind of gives a bit of an insight into my, my headspace and you know the thoughts and the things that go on. But I guess, look, I'll just open up some questions to you to you guys. What, you know, what's, uh, some of the things that are, that arise, you know, mm. be it about me, be it about the trail. Someone asked, is it, is it easy to follow? Think it was yourself, mm. and it is. It's really it's, you guys are doing a fantastic job. You know, you can you could almost do that trail without a map. I wouldn't suggest that anyone did that, but but you could. You know, it's uh, it's well trodden, um, and it's marked in both di directions, and it's uh, it really is nice easy to try to follow. So, what did you? What time did you start and finish? The so I was averaging 12 hours a day, so I started at 6.30 a.m. and then finished obviously at 6.30 p.m. Um, and that was challenging because of the light. It was getting dark at 5.30 here in Adelaide then, and every day we were at it a minute. So the time I was finished, it was an extra 15 minutes you know, of, of, of darkness. Hence why on that kind of last leg I kind of did a bit, a bit more in, in the dark that night uh, across the Flora Peninsula there just to try and bite off a bit, bit more mileage. So, for some long days, but you know that's I'm used to that kind of stuff. 
And it's, it, it's not so bad for me, believe it or not, it's worse for the team. Because they're up bef before me and they go to bed after me. And in between that, it's all about me. <laughs> so they're just exhausted, they don't really get time to sleep, you know, they're, they're, they're always preparing things for me, you know, the whole project's about me, it's kind of self-centred really. Mm. <laughs> what a good idea. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Richard, my question was, you were talking about why, it was how do you do it? Like, mm. but my, my claim to fame amongst me, I, I'm a legend in my own lunchbox sort of thing, I, I walk for, uh, you know, 100k in 24 hours. Wow, but but that's that was minuscule. Well, that was where I, that was 14 years ago when I started the front. I still haven't finished. But how did you manage to bound down those steps? We saw I saw you on the Channel 7 News and on the YouTube thing with a smiling face. But still, I was crawling by the time <laughs> I finished my little bit. I know I wasn't stretching. I don't know all the things that you know about keeping your body in trim. But are you superhuman, or is it just a, what a regular person can do? with how many years of training? Yes, well, I think a regular person can do anything if they want to do it. I think that's that's what it comes down to. You have to want to do it. You know? And mm -hmm. I always say to people, for instance, that might want to might want to lose some weight, they, they come to me and say, I'm going to start running. And I say, why? I say, to, to lose weight. But I hate running, you'll say. Yeah. I say, well, why choose running then? It's going to be very difficult to, to do that, to, mm -hmm. to lose weight. Mm -hmm. If you like to dance, if you like to play tennis, go and do that. It's very easy to get out of bed and, and, and go and do that. So I guess, first of all, there's, there's that want, there's the want to, to do it. And then, I, I, I've got this ability, I think, to, to put my mind in a place that's, let's say it's a, a comfortable room with a, no, a nice couch and a, a, a cup of tea, and, and I stay in that room until the whole trip is over, is over. Now that doesn't mean that I don't go through all those you know, painful moments and, and bad times, but it just means that my headspace is always in a good place. And I think that's why you see me smile a lot. I'm very, I'm very outward with that as well. I'll, I'll be talking to other people. I'll ask the team how they're going. If I met with the walk walkers out there, I'd ask how their trip was going. And I think by doing that, it doesn't put the emphasis on me. And therefore, I don't feel those things perhaps I should feel. You know? um, but yeah, it, 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 becomes a, it becomes a point on these trips where it's, it's purely mental. Because the body's not designed to do 85 mm. or two marathons a day mm. over that kind of terrain, you know, it's, yeah. a, it's a real effort and a struggle. I assume you must have come across the end to end nine group on the last day down near Cape Jordan. Oh, I did, that was a big group too. There was a lot, a lot of high fives. <laughs> I, I, I had a sore hand and they did feet by the end of it. <laughs> well, I was hoping that you were going to do that when we met you a couple of weeks ago because to me that would have been just when you needed it, there was going to be these people starting out and you were going the other way, but you'd done it. Mm. How did that? give you something, or had you already close enough to the end that you were over your doubts and all that anyway? Well, you're, you're over your doubts, so certainly by that stage, you know yeah. that it's, you know that it's, it's, it's done. It's funny because often before I even start the trip, in my own mind it's done. Mm. I don't think about how it's going to be, I feel like I, I think about what, what it's going to be like, now, now it's finished. Am I going to be here, speak to you guys, am I going to be telling other people, how's the Channel 7 News going to go, and I'm thinking about those things, not necessarily mm. how the trip's going to go. So yeah, in my own mind, it's kind of all—it's already been done. I'm just playing it out now. But yeah, I mean, certainly when you meet people and, they, and you tell them what you're doing, they're like, "Oh my God, congratulations! That's amazing!" Of course, it reflects your ego. You feel amazing. I think I ran that section pretty quick. Actually, when I saw those people, like, look at me. <laughs> <laughs> what about your food regime? Uh, it's probably not as uh, as technical as people think. Actually, it's um, you know, it's uh, it's very straightforward. It's it's. It's still you, you kind of your, your three straight meals a day, it's just in bigger quantities. Um, I, I don't need any kind of special diet, really. I mean, I'm making sure I'm getting my proteins and my vitamins and the carbohydrates and stuff. My, my whole day is made up of sports nutrition, with bars and gels and stuff. Yep. If you guys are eating that stuff, <coughs> the day is, you, yeah, it's horrible. It just becomes a, a fuel source, you know, it's not really about eating, it's just about putting the fuel in and, and, and moving. Uh, and then at, yeah, at the end of each day, it would be you made all sorts of things, pasta dishes and uh, potatoes and stews and all sorts of delicious mm -hmm. stuff. Or, or not delicious, <laughs> it just tastes delicious all the same time. To be honest, during the day, and I think this is where the mental side of things come in, I'd prepare a smorgasbord of treats at every aid station, and you could just pick what he wanted. It might be some potato chips or a bit of <coughs> sandwich or a biscuit or something, just something that was enjoyable for you to consume. A little bit of distraction. That's, that's how I saw it. It wasn't. You certainly didn't need that. No, but it was a nice little, little, nice little treat. 
But the, then the answer is a lot. You yeah. a lot yeah. of things. Yeah. Like, you, you wonder where it goes. You just mm. think, gee, I can eat more than that horse in that field. It's mm. incredible. And, and have, <laughs> have you ever known that you've missed, you haven't had enough to eat and felt the fatigue that comes with that? Uh, or do you tend to just overdo it? I'll probably overdo it. Yeah. No, I'm not really overdo it. It's just that I know that I need to have that minimum of 100 calories an hour. Yep. And I, I've got that on me all the time. Yep. So it's just constantly just, mm. if you feel like it or not, it just needs to go in. Yep. I think the only time you get caught out with like fatigue from not doing the right things with food is, is when you're not drinking enough. Mm. And, you, and you, no, you notice that. So do, you have, dehydrate. do you have trouble hydrating? Like, because the guys that do the Tour de France type of thing, the long distance things, they have trouble just simply taking enough fluid in. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's up and down to be honest. You never really... Yeah, I mean, some, some days you just don't drink as much as other days. Mm -hmm. In fact, this trip's... Pro I'll probably drink more on this trip than I have on any, any other trip. Mm -hmm. And I've been to Israel, but it's pretty bloody hot, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, yeah, it's, sometimes it can be, can be an effort, and you just got to force it down yourself. And I'm literally going by how many times I'm going to the toilet out there. Mm -hmm. If I'm not going to the toilet regularly enough, I need to drink more, more fluids. Mm -hmm. uh, and you don't and, get and even then I need to check it to see what, if it's clear or if it's yellow. You don't get queasy in the stomach from drinking so much? Or you... No, I don't think I could drink enough. Okay. I don't think it would be, yeah, almost impossible for me to guzzle down too much. And what about the aftermath, you know, on your body, like sore knees, ankles? What is there a <coughs> price grumpy. to pay? Grumpy. grumpy. Mental. Coming yeah. down. But <laughs> it's, it, it, you definitely, I mean, you, your first day, you know about it. Mm. The second day, you really know about it. And then you, you question yourself, why, why am I doing this? This is ridiculous. And then by the third day, you're kind of just trying to push yourself through a bit of a bit more pain, but it's kind of, you kind of get used to it because it's just there. Mm. And then I think for the rest of the time, it's just there and you just become used to it. Mm. It's like people who have back pain. I'm sure people in this room have got back pain. You, just, you know, you've probably had it for years <laughs> and you just kind of live with it. And I, I think that's kind of what happens out there on the trail. My mm. feet were, were, you know, had um, swollen up, mm. ankles were swollen up, I was sore, had problems that would come, and then a day later they would go. Mm. Um, it's kind of amazing when you, you just push your body and, and you just keep demanding more, how it kind of adapts and just changes. And I'm, I mean, you guys probably know from your own walks, when you go out there, it's the first day is a bit tough, and then you kind of get in a bit of a rhythm, and then you kind of wake up and you find you feel pretty good, you know? And it's the same kind of thing, it just, I mean, a little bit different, but yeah. It's what about coming down after them, like this week? Yeah, that's what I meant with the crappy yeah. 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 yeah, it's not really the day after; it's the day after the day after. Yeah. So yeah. yesterday was my real bad day. Yeah. You don't really know who, who you are, or or you're not particularly excited. You're not sad. You're not. You don't know if you're hungry or or you're not. You don't know if you want to watch television or you want to go for a walk. It's <laughs> really hard. Go, you don't know what you want to do. Your body's telling you you want to go for a run, probably. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of strange, yeah. You know? And all sorts of, all sorts of different things kind of... Uh, it's different, you know? Everything's different. Obviously, I'm eating, I'm still eating, but it's kind of like craving sort of bad foods. Mm. You know, someone because I've been eating so many lollies and chips in the last two weeks. It's kind of like... My body goes, I want lollies and I want <laughs> chips. You go, well, this is the worst time to eat lollies and chips because I'm doing nothing. You know? mm -hmm. So, do you, uh, do, you, do you set a tempo that varies only according to the terrain, or if it gets flat, do you flog yourself and um, flatten easy? I mean, or if it's easy going. Well, easy going is harder for me. So, it's when they're going flat and easy, and I had a, had a day like that, mm -hmm. where there's like, I only did 65 kilometres, I think. Up to, um, um, it was two. Yeah, what's going on The wine region. Mm. Oh, right, through the Bryson. Yeah, maybe you yeah. said yeah. Was, you can see I was struggling on yeah. the track at that day. It's flat and he only did 65. Yeah, sometimes with, with flat terrain, it's. Um, Every step's the same. Yeah, there's that. And I think it's, I think mentally you know that you can do the distance yeah. with this flat. Mm. So you can go, at any moment, I could probably pick up the speed and just get this done. Mm -hmm. And with that, becomes this kind of. Not wanting to go, mm -hmm. complacency with it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you give me you know, 80 kilometres of big, rugged, mat, mountain range, then you, you kind of um, you know you have to just get on with it, otherwise, you're going to be out there and it's dark, dark, you know, mm -hmm. and cold and horrible, so you, you kind of push yourself more. Um, so, yeah, sometimes the flatter train is hard, but there's a kind of a set speed. Yeah, it's not. It, and, you, and you said it, like the, the, the terrain dictates my day and how it's mm. going to go. You know, if it's like this all day versus like that all day, it's, it's a big difference. Mm. Um, and the rationale for starting in the north then? 
the hardest to first. Right. Yeah. Or at least in my in my mind, I saw that kind yeah. of dry creek bed stuff and yeah. that kind of more more demanding. Yeah. Okay. What would you think of deep deep creek down at the bottom of the Furrier Peninsula? Some of that can be a bit tough. Yeah, it's been a nice It's kind of nothing compared to what happened <laughs> the days before. <laughs> if I'm honest. Um, yeah, I mean it's. Uh, yeah, I mean that's. Um, yeah, I mean that's pretty much nothing down there. But not nothing. It's not it's going, but it's you know, it's all relative, isn't it? You know, it's kind of. Well, you enjoyed seeing the ocean. You said, and you saw whales and dolphins. So whales. Oh, wow. oh, well Actually, it's funny. We uh, had a had a guy come and run that last section with me, and uh, we got on, got onto the beach and we're running on the beach. I said, "What's that big fin there? There's a whale just 100 meters offshore." So wow. He stops and some pictures. Yeah. This is we're so lucky to, to mm. see this. Then we run to the end, end of the beach, and there's a whole school of dolphins jumping out of the water. This is mm. unbelievable. Mm. Some more more fins taking pictures, mm-hmm. and we climb up over to the, the next beach. And I said, "Wow, there's some more fins in the water. I can't believe it." So the other guy gets his camera out, he's taking pictures. Mm-hmm. And as we get closer, it's just full surface. <laughs> 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 it's like, whoops, look at my eyes. Among the shells. <laughs> and Elizabeth said you counted some plovers. So who did the plovers stand? Yeah, I did. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, wow. And she was kind of surprised. She. Uh, that I read the signage and stuff. It's like, no, you have to read signs. Like, I forgot to read a sign in, in Israel once, and it said this is like a, an army training zone. Mm. I was chased by a tank. So it's kind of like, you remember to start reading signs. Right? Then you sign all the logbooks. Sign all the logbooks. Oh, you signed all the logbooks. The ones that were there. Yeah, because yeah, I, I, I heard from someone that had uh, seen your entry in one of the log in one mm. of the log books. I didn't realise you stopped and signed them all. Yeah, we stopped and signed a log book. Because I know it's kind of history, like it goes somewhere. Yeah. Mm. It's put in a file somewhere. Mm. So what's next for you? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, okay. Well, yeah. Right. Yeah, it's funny because it's yeah, I don't. It's not like I sit there with a, a big map and go, oh that. I look at stuff and go, that you know, Japan kind of appeals to me. It's appealed, appealed to me for a long time. Um, different places around the world appeal to me, but it's never those ones that come to me. It's the most likely these trails pick me. Somehow, I don't really know how. I mean, sometimes I wish I didn't. Mm-hmm. But it's almost like they, they come to me, isn't it? It's Israel happened because Rich got on the cover of a magazine that ended up in Israel in the lap of the marketing manager of the company of the backpack that Rich was wearing on the cover of the magazine. They said, are we sponsoring you? Rich said, no. Would you like to? They said, yes. He goes, have you got any long trails in Israel? They said, yes, we do. He said, okay, sponsor me to come okay. over and I'll run yeah, So it was kind of <laughs> yeah. oh, meant to be. Just and I came here for a conference last year and we, how did we know about the Heisman? I knew of it. I mean, I know yeah, most of the trials right. in Australia yeah. for obvious reasons. Um, but I, uh, we went out for a run up at um, Marialta, yeah, with a friend, and I saw the markers there. Mm-hmm. He goes, Oh, this is the heist. I said, Oh, yeah, I've, I've looked at it before. So, yeah, well, I think I'll just commit to that now. I'll just do that. <laughs> 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 it's pretty much how it happened. And where did the 14 days come from? I don't know where the fourteen days come from. Why did we say fourteen days? Because it, it sounds good. No, because that's all I could take off work. Oh, fourteen days. <laughs> 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 if you can get it done in fourteen days, I'm in. Have you done any stuff at altitude? Yeah, well, I did um, the the Tierra Road Trail in New Zealand. Okay. So most of that, that starts in the, the very north of the North Island and then finishes the southern tip of the South Island mm-hmm. around their mountain range. And so there's some three thousand meter, three thousand meter peaks and stuff there. Um, very challenging. You know, you got sometimes you're in, in the snow line, waist deep, mm-hmm. avalanche zones, mm-hmm. no equipment, it's kind of dangerous stuff. Mm-hmm. Yep. That really is a wilderness trail, It really mm-hmm. is kind of. Uh, mm-hmm. Someone just died on the trail. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, uh, I mean, before some of these long distance trails, I, I ran the, the Everest ma- uh, Marathon, which starts at base camp. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of high well, altitude stuff. Mm-hmm. But again, legend in the lunchbox, I, I, I was doing the a walk around the, up there, and uh, you know, we we're all thinking, at, reflecting on how you know, clever we are. And uh, there were these suddenly out of nowhere appeared intermittently these guys running the bloody marathon <laughs> through the. You know, just, mm. just surreal. You know? <laughs> <laughs> we, 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 this has been one of the greatest achievements of, of, of our lifetime, and you know, these people. Running the bloody <laughs> 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 and in different places, they had uh, 
the little groups of people yeah, waiting for them to be clapping them through. Yeah. And they'd walked up, you know, the bloody uh, the, the, the track to the... Yeah, the two uh, the acclimatisation walk. And yeah. uh, just... Yeah. Mm. So how many pairs of shoes did you get through? Oh, two, but we've only been one pack, really. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you're yeah. running shoes gripped on all those river rocks, all right? Yeah, ma mainly. Travelling shoes are, I mean, they're still a running shoe, but they, I guess they're more designed to move uh, lat laterally. Mm -hmm. You know, as a really road running shoe is made for that forward mo motion. And if you take that on a trail, it tends not to last very long. But also, a trail shoe has obviously got a lot, a lot more grip. They try and use sticky type of rubbers mm -hmm. to, to grip onto stuff. So, yeah, plenty of, plenty of traction and stuff. Okay. Yeah, and, and, until you slip and then you get yeah. rough on ready shins. Um, just perhaps to finish off, uh, what about uh, sleeping arrangements? Um, like uh, you did have uh, rest overnight, and how was that? Yeah, so we uh, we camped and we stayed in some of the huts too. So um, we, we stayed in two huts. We stayed, we camped, and we stayed in a couple of hotels. Yeah, we did. Like yeah. pubs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, it's uh, I'll, what I've learned from some of the other things I've done is that you, you really need to sleep on the trail. It's, it, even though it might be 10 minutes to somebody's house or 10 minutes to a, a hotel or 10 minutes to a campsite, that 10 minutes is sometimes crucial. I could have been eaten and slept within that 10 minutes. You know, mm. If you go off and you need to go 10 minutes early and it becomes a real rigmarole of, mm -hmm. of stuff. So this time around, we really tried to stay on the trail. So we camped where, 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 where we could. Um, and if we were in a, a little town, then we'd jump in the local pub. Uh, and then you've got some amazing huts. We did the old schoolhouse there. Um, Matt Brian. Matt Brian. Brian. Yeah. I'm glad you remember the names because I can't remember. Mm -hmm. uh, and where did we say? The old Shearer's quarters? Yeah, at the Dutchman's. Uh, oh, Dutchman's. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was great. Yeah. Sure it's <laughs> 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 yeah, some amazing, some amazing uh, places, you know. Even places I didn't stay at. You just have a quick look and go, wow, you know. Okay, just you quick, are, you, are you in touch with your crew all the day or frequently or what? Um, we would meet Rich quite frequently. In the first few days in the Flinders Ranges, he'd mm. go up to 35 kilometres without seeing us, right. um, which could be up to five or six hours. Yeah. Mm. Um, as we got further south, we tried to meet him between every six and ten kilometres. And when we could, if we could drive on the trail, if mm. it was on a road, mm. we'd take his backpack, put it in the car, and he'd drive right next to him, or meet him every two to five right. kilometres. Just yeah. depending yeah. how he was tracking if he was particularly tired i'd stay with him if he was tired and grumpy i'd meet him every few kilometers and just leave him to it not so much grumpy but if he wasn't in that headspace you know just he's better to be left alone i think so yeah we played it by ear and it was i think that's a thing with supporting someone as probably you guys would know yeah. with the walk sometimes people are need a bit of nurturing other times they're less mm. yes. do their thing yeah yeah but no, what a wonderful trail, guys. You, uh, you yeah. say you do, you do a great job. It's, uh, it's a real testament to you all. You know, it's, um, it's beautiful. Obviously, you don't have much to do with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's well organised. It's, it's well organised. It's tailored. Updates. There's lots of information. There's lots of great updates. The yeah. books are fantastic. And, yeah. and, and you know, the people who have done walk this trail are, are, are quite at all. You know, it's, it's there. So, you know. But it's well known within South Australia. Everybody knows the Hyacinth Trail. That's incredible. Mm. We do a, really do a bit and uh, we're pretty good in South Australia, but it's getting that knowledge out mm. the rest of Australia and then especially overseas um, to bring some of these other people over to uh, experience what you've experienced. Well, let's hope we've done that. And I've uh, yeah. actually, I'm, I'm on the channel. Uh, You're on ABC Radio National tomorrow, weekend sunrise on Saturday morning. Yeah. Channel 10, morning, I think show. morning show next Thursday. Yeah. So. Thursday next week. We'll keep, we'll keep you guys in the morning. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. So it gets, gets the name out again, which is great. Mm -hmm. yeah. So thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. And um, we've... Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, now, we've had a bit of a consultation.